Today on Shredding Spree, sure I've already got two mountain bikes, but what if I had three? That's right, today I'm doing yet another bike build, and this one's for me. And no, it's not a Huffy. It's been almost exactly a year since I built the infamous purple and gold Dolly Eponym, and man, it's been quite a ride. When I bought that bike, Dolly had no idea who I was, not that I'm really anyone special anyway, or that I'd be making YouTube content with their product. But as luck would have it, the video and photos that I shot with that build ended up getting quite a bit of traction on the interwebs. And in light of that, Tom and I have basically stayed in touch ever since. But after he caught me dirt jumping on his long and slack enduro hardtail on Instagram, he basically reached out and said, hey bud, my 27.5 rally frame I build is a little more suited for that. The rally is basically the kid brother with ADD to the eponym enduro frame. It's a little bit shorter, spec for 27.5 wheels, little bit steeper, and a lot more playful. Now when I say it's steeper, I really mean it's only a little bit steeper than the eponym. It's still a pretty slack bike overall, so it's a capable trail bike that should be a little more at home on the jumpy stuff. After Tom's suggestion, I pondered on the prospect of building another bike. And after imagining my life after my wife leaves me for building another mountain bike, I decided to take the risk and pull the trigger. So I spent the following months gathering up parts and I ended up with a pretty nice spec that I'll go over once the bike is built. But as far as the build goes, I'm currently in a time crunch because I'm going to Bentonville this weekend and I want to take this thing. So I basically have just enough time to put the thing together, take it out for a quick shakedown run, and then pack it to fly. Like tomorrow. In light of that time crunch, I've pre-built as much as I can of the bike. So, there's not going to be a whole lot to watch here. So I'm going to switch it to time lapse so I can bang this out. The last aspect I need to mention about this build is that I have no idea what color this frame is. When Tom and I agreed to do this build, I told him to pick whatever color he wants and to keep it a secret from me. So I made sure to spec the bike with a bunch of neutral tone parts so it'll kind of go with anything. So without any more build up, let's see what color this bike is. Oh man. Oh my god. This thing's incredible. All right, so I had a little camera malfunction and it stopped recording right as I pulled the frame out, which is probably better so you didn't hear me squeal like a girl when I saw this color. This appears to be a black powder coat with a purple sparkle in it, and it's incredible. I got to get it out into the sunlight to see it. But here it is, this is the Dolly Rally. 27.5 hardtail, ready to party. All right, I'm gonna switch it over to time lapse and get the wheels on this thing. Alright, here it is, the Dolly Rally 27.5 trail hardtail slash party bike. You'd think I'd be used to putting bikes together by now, but I still can't help but fall in love every time. I gotta admit, this build's profile with the 27.5 wheels really hits a soft spot for me. I kind of feel like a lot of those 29ers tend to look like wagon wheels from the side because they're so big, but this one with the slightly smaller wheels I feel like has such a nice profile, looks like a little motocrosser. Taking a closer look at this bike, there's definitely a few parts that deserve special mention. And I have to start with the Bird TR30 wheels. Bird spokes have been a good friend of the channel over the last year and I'll never pass on a chance to talk them up. In my opinion, if you already have a capable hardtail, this is the single greatest upgrade you can do to the bike. I think having these wheels on a hardtail holds greater value than buying a top spec fork. The combination of the lightweight wheel set along with the dampening qualities of these spokes improves the ride so much that if I can help it, I'll never have a bike without these on it again. The next person I gotta thank for supporting this build is John over at Trail Tune Suspension. He helped get me connected with this 140mm RockShock Pike and a full GX group set. 
Since my race day video where I first mentioned how much trail tune suspension is helping me up keep my squishy bits, John has secured a corner in one of our local shops, Bicycle John's, for his suspension service. So if you live in close proximity to the Santa Clarita Valley, you can rest assured that there's a local guy that can get your suspension turned over quickly and reliably. The next unique part on this bike is this sweet custom stem cap from the Dark Bike Company. If you're like me and you lie in bed at night thinking about your bike, why not add a cool custom piece of jewelry to really make it your own? The Dark Bike Company will literally put anything you want on a stem cap as long as it'll fit on there. If you wanted your stem cap to say shredding spree sucks or Chris is a or your mom's a pile of they don't care, they'll put it on there. The quality is great, the machining is beautiful, you should definitely check them out. Next are these killer pedals from Tor Cycling. You might not have seen these bad boys before because they've only recently become available. Tor is a local company that makes a plethora of bike components like pedals, stems, handlebars, and wheels. The owner and designer of Tor is a lifelong and local BMX enthusiast. His thoughtful approach to design and machining keeps his components lightweight and strong. Last year when I built the Purple Hardtail, I got a lot of crap from the commenters for putting Chester pedals on there. My argument for the Chesters was that they were so cheap, lighter than most of the alloy pedals, and still strong enough to where I never had a failure. But these alloy pedals are actually lighter than the Chesters, and I'm even thinking that their thin profile could reduce the chances of pedal strikes. Every little bit helps. The last special mention I'll make for this bike is to local mountain bike OG, Rob Irwin. When I started sourcing parts for this bike, I put a couple feelers out to the local community to see if anybody had any used parts they wanted to get rid of. And Rob came in hot by donating these SRAM Code R brakes and Trail 1 grips. The grips are a little bigger than what I'm used to, but I'm kind of liking them so far. And these SRAM brakes are almost the only used component I put on this build. And as someone that usually only runs Shimano brakes, I'm actually really enjoying them. So thanks again for your generosity, Rob. Along with this frame, Dolly sent me their really cool rage cage setup, which bolts onto a set of bottle bosses, and it's basically a mounting interface to carry a spare tube, multi-tool, CO2, basically anything else you could possibly need for a sub three hour ride. And if you love riding without a pack as much as I do, you really appreciate stuff like that. I also don't like strapping that stuff directly to the frame because dirt always gets underneath it. It's gonna rub up the paint. It's not a good scenario. Rounding out the parts list on this bike, I've got a one up 210 millimeter dropper WTB Volt seat. The wheels came spec with Industry 9 Hydra hubs. I've got center lock Galfer wave rotors on there. A one up carbon bar, 20 millimeter rise. Race face turbine R stem. And a Silka titanium bottle cage. And I think that pretty much covers it. Oh yeah, two more quick things. I've got the Rideworks bean can headset. And I've spec the tires with my trusty 2.5 Maxxis setup. DHF in the front and aggressor in the rear. So those are all my notes about this bike. I feel like this platform with the 27.5 wheels really goes against the current 29er trend, at least in this area. And I haven't ridden a 27.5 bike since about 2018. So I'm interested to see what the ride is like when we take out a little bit of the business and add a little extra party. Stay tuned for more videos on that. If you enjoyed this video, or you just love to hate me, consider subscribing. Maybe even hook the flat on that like button. That was dumb. Anyway, by hitting that like button, it's telling YouTube to show my videos to more people and it motivates me to keep this thing going. Thanks for watching.